that Scar versus Jason Blade is going to be game number one, uh, match number one here today. Starting with game number one. Excited to see it. That Scar here in the yellow in the left, and Jason Blade in the right in the blue. I'm gonna, it's going to take me a minute to get used to these earbuds, so forgive me if I'm a little thrown off, but we're going to see this best of five. These are both beginner players. They would be in the beginner division. Um, doesn't mean that they uh, have just started playing. They've, they are either new to the game, or they are rusty, haven't played in a while, um, or they just you know, have kept their competitive skill fairly low. There's more to Tooth and Tail than just competitive 1v1, so no worries there. But it can be a, a really fun game mode. It's one of the more popular ways of playing this game. Let's see what they're up to. It looks like that Scar is playing for the boar. He's got pigeons, he's got boar, he's got squirrels, and then some structures. So ideally you kind of play defensively, um, take some space on the map maybe with the balloons, or use the MGs in the mines to get up to the boar, and then boar with pigeon and squirrel is a pretty good push. It doesn't, uh, it, it, plenty has, it definitely has plenty of counters that can work against it, but it's pretty well-rounded. I like it. Jason Blade here. It's got a little bit more standard of a deck. Squirrel, Mole, some Cams, and some Skunks, which are very good fighting tier 2s. Also Wolf, so that the tier 2 composition can scale better into the late game. And then MGs, so pretty good decks from both of these players. Looks like Scar is going for this base over here as an expansion, kind of off to the side. Both players are getting plenty of Squirrel Warrens. Scar's Warrens are kind of out in the middle of nowhere for right now. It's a very aggressive placement. Um, generally you want your warrens like right next to, hugging your pig warrens, that way they can tank for each other and pigs can shoot and reinforcements can pop out and you know you get a lot of defenders advantage that way, but you don't have to. Jason Blade is going to try to maybe snipe a pig here or two. Welcome in, Scar in the chat here. Ooh, the mole is going to kill a pig here. Two moles for a pig is is value for sure. It's a little bit of value. It's not huge, uh, especially considering Scar grabbed some farms here. But it's something. Um, it looks like Jason Blade also grabbing some farms on his side. So pretty even so far. Again, I like the defensive setup from Jason a little bit more. Scar is kind of counting on keeping map control. He's got mines out there. He's got his warrens out forward. So... It's a bit risky, but, you know, it might not be a bad idea if you can keep map presence. Both sides d are getting slightly higher squirrel numbers. Right now, that Scar actually has a pretty significant squirrel lead, so he could have pushed harder there. Um, there's only six squirrels sitting here for Jason Blade, so Scar could definitely have taken that fight and killed the mill here. But Jason is going to rally over the rest of his squirrels now, and cams are on the way, so... Scar is safe for now the boar has been put down also very exposed definitely want the boar kind of back here or back here kind of behind your bases generally all right jason blade's gonna push in here doesn't have his cams with him yet but he will still be able to get a pick on that uh warren two warrens go down the mg is up though and good placement the squirrels are right in front of the mgs so the mg is good for its dps not for its tanking so it actually got a lot of value there now the boar is about to uh, need to get paid for here, so I might just wait a second. Jason is popping down the wolf warren and a fourth farm on his expansion. Now Jason actually has a pretty good attack coming in here, he focuses down the MG and he's got cams and a significantly higher squirrel numbers. So that boar warren is actually going to be able to get picked off, which is kind of a big deal. He's going to focus it down. It's actually a slight inaccuracy here. You may as well finish off the squirrels nearby first, but regardless, it goes down, and Scar has to tap out. So a lot of that has to do with the really aggressive warren placement. Um, you don't want to put your tier 1 warrens, and certainly not your boar warren, out in the open. But good game there. Let's go to game 2.
All right, that Scar here in the red in the top, and Jason Blade in the blue in the bottom. Scar in the chat saying that he was, the reasoning behind that was kind of scared of the high ground position, so putting his eggs on there. Now, if you need to hold the high ground, putting your tier one Warrens up there, as well as the MG to try to hold that space, especially the MG, is not a bad idea. Like if you just popped your MG there and left your army there, maybe one or two tier one tier one Warrens is not too bad because that way you can, you know, have them help in the fight. But the thing is a tier three Warren does absolutely nothing in a fight. So um, even if you were going to put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, and have that high ground, uh, still would have been better to have the boar somewhere safer because you might have actually been able to counter push with that. Um, so a risky play. I see the, uh, I see the rationale there. Nice scouting with your commander. Actually, you're able to snipe the mole before it's able to kill anything. So that's really nice, from Jason Blade. Um, also popping down the MG. So that's totally not going to work. Actually, just farming a little bit of extra value for, for Jason. Mole pl mole rushes. Uh, they can be good. They can be a little tough to execute, at first. But you know. It's worth getting good at. Now, Jason's kind of floating a little extra here, trying to figure out what he wants to do. The decks here are pretty similar. Squirrel, Mole, Snake, either Skunk or Cam, a Tier 3 and a Structure. Um, I like the Skunk-Snake combination a little bit better. So that Scar has a pretty pretty dang good deck. Um, Jason Blade, pretty good as well. Um, I like both of them. Okay, so here we have kind of the same idea with the forward warrens. Yeah, it's good to keep vision to the high ground, but you only need one warren up there to do it with. Um, the rest of your warrens could easily be more defensible by the by the pigs. Also, the tier two warren should definitely be further back and safe, because if you lose a tier one warren, it's not the end of the world, depending on what stage of the game you're in. But if you lose a tier two warren, that's kind of a big deal. Um, so you definitely want to protect your high value warrens. I do like this Squirrel Skunk versus Pure Squirrel, though. This is really good for the Skunk player. You can put down excellent pre-gas, especially with the, the moles coming up. This is going to be a pretty powerful timing attack. Jason's going to be in trouble if he doesn't get his snakes out. A second farm, a third farm queued. Going to have to sell one here. Now, Jason does have a pretty pretty high Squirrel count, and he's going to focus on this Warren. So that Squirrel might have been moving out just a tiny bit too early without both Skunks uh, ready to go and all the army rallied up. But Jason should definitely not be able to continue pushing here. Nice kiting back with the skunk. That's pretty good. Problem is, now that Jason Blade has pushed Scar's army back and killed a skunk almost for free, now he's got two farms and a snake popping out. So this is actually looking pretty good for Jason already. That Scar is going to be refreshing his army count. Um, generally not advisable to really resell. This is extremely risky, especially with the tier 2. It's not really it's not really helpful, but that's alright. We'll have to see what uh, what Jason wants to do here. Jason did scout it. I do like the army composition here for sure. Driving a couple of farms as well. Jason is gonna take the time to tech up into the wolf. You see the wolf and the tier two warrens are kinda of safely placed between the pigs. This is a very defensive setup. It's, it's really hard to push in unless you just beat them uh, straight up. I do want to point out as well, unlike some RTSs, high ground um, isn't the worst of, of disadvantages. Ooh, nice skunk gas here. The snakes are going to be able to do some damage, but the skunk gas is going to totally push everything back. Um, and you can kind of pursue and pick off maybe another snake, maybe some more squirrels. So nice defense from that scar. Nice targeting on the snakes too, so only squirrels get tagged there, so very efficient from, from that scar. And then the cam is going to take a bunch of damage and maybe get killed here as well. Yeah, this, the cam goes down as well, so this is great from that scar. And you can keep pushing with those skunks and just lay down gas fields, and there's not much Jason Blade can do unless he... Uh, from Jason Blade here, you want to be targeting the expensive units with your snakes once they pop out. You want to get the, you know, two or three tags on each uh, skunk. I think it's two tags on each skunk would do it. So he's kind of doing that now. There we go. Now one skunk does get tagged. There's a single tag on the second skunk. That's not going to be enough there. So that scar is just continuously putting on damage. 
Now he's actually fighting out in the middle here, just army versus army. And with snakes, eventually the snake will push back. It might be better to try to put some pressure on the uh, pigs here since Jason is actually working with a superior economy. Now that he has his wolf out, the wolf cam is going to do wonders. If that whole time the skunk gas had been happening over here on this base and pigs had gone down, that might have been a much closer fight. But GG, nice, uh, nice push there from Scar. Also, if Scar hadn't been behind in the early game, that push probably would have been the end of the game for sure. So that kind of push is really good. Let's see game three here. That Scar changing up the color to green. And Jason Blade in the bottom. Jason running with that same idea. Squirrel Mole, a couple of tier two. Wolf, MG. Scar going with a Badger and Fox. And good job bringing the pigeons with the Badger there. Also that Squirrel Skunk that I liked to see last game. So these are both really, really strong decks. There's something I wanted to say last game, but I can't remember what it was. It'll come back to me, probably. Maybe not. Now I'm torturing myself trying to think of it. While both players are scouting here. Seven farm safety were in here. Oh, I was talking about the high ground, I believe. Yeah, so high grounds in uh, like StarCraft Brood War, StarCraft on the original like eSport RTS, you'd miss shots when shooting uphill. Uh, they dropped that in StarCraft 2 and in Tooth and Tail, same idea. So the shooting up to high ground does not have any chance of missed shots or anything like that. It's merely a vision thing, which can be scary um, since your opponents can kind of get the first shots and you can't see them unless your commander goes and gets high ground vision. So it can be tricky, but it's not as oppressive as it feels sometimes. If you've got an equal army to them or a slightly higher army, you can just push up to the high ground and take a roughly even fight. So it can be really scary having high ground in front of your base like right here, but it's not as big of a deal um, as long as you know how to handle it. Vision is scary for sure. Um, so you have to be careful with where your commander's at. Kind of keep vision out there. That's why mines are nice. That's why MGs are nice. Um, or flying units like pigeons or falcons. If you have like three pigeons or two, like if you have one pigeon warren or one falcon warren in your army, um, that can be perfect for high ground vision. Um, but it's not, it's not as bad as I think some players make it out to be. Um, but it's, it is something to keep an eye on, for sure. Looks like Scar is trying to be the one to uh, get the economy first. The skunks here in this choke are going to do amazing, so Jason Blade is going to back up. His skunks are on the way. Oh, he didn't actually rally those, so he only was bringing the squirrels. That's interesting. Usually, you want to, you definitely want to have your skunks in the fight to to tank. Now, Jason does have the superior squirrel skunk numbers right now, so Scar is going to have to pull back. Hopefully, he doesn't lose that extra skunk here. It's kind of a defender's advantage situation here. That Warren is going to get picked up, but that's alright, it's just a tier 1 Warren. Both sides gassing down the opponent's squirrels. And Jason Blade has to pull back. That Scar puts down a couple of farms. I like this for Scar. He's got slightly higher squirrel numbers. Jason relying on moles. A couple of farms go down as well. And Scar is going to grab some pigeons. Generally, at this point, only three pigeons. You don't want both pigeon warrens because more squirrels is always better. More squirrels is almost always better than more pigeons. Um, having a couple of pigeons for high ground vision and for healing skunks can be good, but you can you can have too many. That is such a thing. Jason Blade here going up into cams. Very nice. So I'm liking the compositions from both players. Hey, Sasha, welcome in. Uh, no RT, no new RTS for me for a while. RTSs are a big time sink that I don't, I don't have time or energy for. I don't actually like single player RTSs and multiplayer RTSs are 
kind of a huge time sink, especially if I can't cast them. I like casting more than I like playing. Well, actually, I like a mix of both, but I, I, I do really love casting, so... That's the, uh, the answer. I have not played Cult of the Lamb, no. Frika in the chat. Jason focuses fire at the mill so that skunks walk forward not firing for a few seconds. Yeah, little micro things like that can make a huge difference with skunks. It can be a big deal. Now this minefield in this choke area mines plus skunk gas uh, is going to just absolutely decimate any army that runs through. I think if I could nitpick, I think one or two of these mines might be a bit superfluous. But it depends on where your opponent decides to come in, so... I don't hate it. It's uh, it's definitely pretty powerful. You've also got a couple of mines on the other side to warn you if Jason wants to go attack from the other direction. Uh, this side, there again, there is that mine kind of watching. Also, this is where the valuable base is, so I really like the setup from Scar. That's great. Um, and another couple of mines. That's a lot, but you know what? He looks like he's worried about an attack, and Jason is taking his time, so he's not actually going to see these mines. Also, if you sit your army on top of your mines like this, it's great. Your opponent can't actually scout the mines because your commander will die, right? So this is good from Scar. Now his commander's gone, so Jason might take a favorable advantage here, a favorable fight. The cam's getting up front and beating down a bunch of stuff, but a couple of more mines go off. This should be a hold from Scar. Yeah. And with the pigeons keeping the skunks alive and even keeping all the squirrels alive in that gas, that's a really, really good hold from Scar. Um, it is a bit of an army trade, but I, again, I like it for Scar. The only thing Jason Blade's got right now is he actually has a pretty big economy, so... And the wolf has just popped out. Scar is waiting on the badger. Selling down the mines. This is tricky, because there's about to be a wolf army. Mines are great against wolf armies. Um, since the, the armies can kind of run right through the mines before you have a chance. So putting down a couple more mines I like. At least the one. And here comes the badger... Now the thing is we've got DPS machine versus slow damage. So Scar has to keep that badger alive. You want to rally back only the badger to make sure it's revving. Jason is trying to chase, but he loses the cams, and the badger is now revved up. Oh, the wolf goes down almost immediately. Only thing that's left is skunk. So this is going to be basically a win from Scar. Nicely done. Good positioning and use of the map there from Scar that time. Yeah, the mass mine can be can be really good. I like it. Let's go to game four here. That scar versus Jason Blade. That scar in the bottom here, starting his comeback. Maybe a reverse sweep, and Jason Blade in the blue in the top. Uh, Sasha does have a point here in the chat. Um, generally, if you are the wolf player, you don't want to try to chase and focus the badger. It's really tempting to try to kill the badger because if you kill it you're doing great obviously but against a competent badger player you'll never catch it so what you want to do is you want to kill the rest of the army and then back up and disengage you don't you don't want to uh you don't want to focus your fire on the badger like those cams running through trying to kill the badger and then just dying so that worked out really well for scar um because jason blade was trying to focus the uh Yeah, exactly. Unless you have, like, mass falcons and your opponent slips up, you, you can't actually kill the badger with focus firing like that, so... Yep. That's right. If you're playing against badger, you wanna you want to resist the temptation. What's up, Hollow Husk? Uh, Scar, just to clarify, uh, Hollow Husk is referring to me when he uh, said that, when when they said that in the, uh, in the chat there. <laughs> Not you. Don't worry about it. Oh, no, oh, well, now that I said that... No, Scar is good. Scar is good. These are both really, uh, really good plays for from the beginner division. I'm liking it. There's a lot of smart decision-making, a lot of kind of strong meta comps, a lot of smart plays. Uh, Scar is going for Squirrel Toad, which I am personally a fan of, especially right now. This is a pretty solid deck. The only weakness in this deck is the Badger doesn't have Pigeons to go with it, um, which, it, it, which can can work especially against jason's blade J sorry jason blade's deck specifically without falcons or snakes or whatever you might be fine with a pigeonless badger um you know it's a little risky a fewer options though so 
We'll have to see. Jason going for the cam first. Scar going for the uh, the eco first here. Looks like both players have really warmed up to the series. They kind of have an idea of what the opponent's style is, and uh, I feel like this is a pretty close matchup. Scar trying to get into some Falcons here, which is great. That is his tier two of choice. Falcons alone are pretty decent defensively. Not great if you try to attack with them without tanks and stuff. Um, you can make it work, but it's tricky. I would say both players right now should be safe uh, defending and would be unwise to attack. Both sides are farming up pretty aggressively. There's a Mole Warren. Looks like that was a defensive Mole Warren. Uh, that Scar felt like maybe he was about to be attacked, and so dropping the moles. Farming up pretty hard. I like it. Jason trying to get some more tech here. Skunk and Cam together. Once you get the skunks out, you have enough to try to start putting on some pressure. And it looks like that Scar is going to drop the Badger, maybe. Oh, an Artie. Okay, okay. This Artie is positioned to defend the Warrens, defend the third base, defend mostly the second base. You might lose a farm or two, but, you know, you really stake claim over this high part of the map. Also, it's going to be really hard for Jason to shut that Artie down before it's up. So, very defensive placement. I like it. I like it. At some point, it might be worth moving the Artie over to, like, here so that it can kind of help you take a fourth base if you want it, but we might not get that far, so I like it. It's good. Jason Blade will definitely not be able to attack into an arty with the army. Skunks, cams, and squirrels are all kind of slow-moving. Uh, slow-moving ranged or slow-moving melee, so... The arty is definitely going to work well. And then there goes the badger and more falcons and more farms, so lots of greed here from Scar, whereas Jason has lots of squirrels, but the squirrels are not going to be able to attack into an arty. Jason is going to get up into the wolf. Just remember that if you need money, once the badger it needs to be paid for, you can actually just sell the arty, because then there's not really a window of opportunity here. That scar is selling the tier one. Um, but one thing I like to do with arty is you use it to feel safe, you use it to greet up, and then the minute the badger needs paid for, you sell the arty and you spam a bunch of tier one, like right now. And then you've got like a really killer timing attack. Because right now you don't actually need that already anymore you're about to get a badger and you have a bunch of falcons so, uh, selling down the squirrels actually is going to weaken your timing attack um, it could still work we don't you don't actually have to attack when the badger pops out you can just play macro you've got a lot of uh, economy here 18 farms versus 11 you've got access to a fourth base whereas jason has to really go out of his way to take a third so you definitely don't have to try to attack Jason is going to be relying on Mass Squirrel Wolf, which is good. Um, this is going to be a very aggressive high DPS fight with the Mass Falcon versus the Mass Wolf Squirrel. Interesting, going into lots and lots of Toads. Now the Toads might work well against the Wolf Buff Squirrels. The Squirrels could gun down the, uh, the Toads before they get in there, or they could accidentally rush right into their deaths, so... All right, looks like Jason is going to go for the timing, grabbing a whole bunch of moles here. We'll have to hope for the best toad connections, and that badger needs to stay alive. Because um, that scar just has an insane economy. Now, that scar has seen the moles, so he knows it's coming. He's seen the wolf uh, buff, so this is going to come down to, like, the two seconds of focus firing or micro right at the beginning of that fight. Like, literally two seconds. Also, the uh, the direction of engagement. I like the staggering the arty forward. That's that's pretty decent. Again, you've got more bases on your side of the map, so you don't have to attack. And I think Scar knows that. I think he can just play defensive and kind of leapfrog the arties. Nice Warren right in front of the arty to try to tank. All right, Jason is trying to move in. Here goes. 
Toad connections, Falcons fi uh, firing at everything, and it looks like Jason's just going to lose everything here. Enough Falcons left over, and that Scar just crushes. And the Artie doesn't go down, so it's going to it's gonna go up here. And nice sell on the back, Artie. That, oh, okay, for, selling the forward Artie as well. That's fine. Just make sure you can rebuy everything. That works, because now you can push out and attack. Third base goes down. I think that Scar's just going to roll over uh, Jason... Jason's uh, situation here. As long as you have enough tier 1 to tank for your Falcons and they don't die too cheap, then you're going to do great. That Scar is going to make sure that the Wolf Warren dies, and that's going to tie up our series 5-5. Five to five. Can that Scar reverse sweep? Or is Jason Blade going to take Game 5 and the series that he almost took at the very beginning here? So we've got that Scar switching back up to the yellow in the north for this last game. And Jason Blade in the bottom here. Jason Blade sticking with a very meta comp here. Squirrel Mole, Falcon Cam, Skunk, Wolf. This is literally like the best wolf deck I can think of. Just like straight up Erlu right here. Uh, that Scar going with a four farm single? Five farm, excuse me, five farm single? If this is aggressive, you'd probably want to sell your fifth farm and go into just a regular far five farm double. If it's not aggressive, it might be better to have your warren like back by your pigs because this is pretty pretty risky. Kind of a slow. Okay, yeah, it's like a five farm single safety, which is cool. You can put on aggression, but probably better to just have the lizard warren right here instead of here. That way, you can't get killed by a counterattack. Jason is being a little greedy though, so you can definitely kill a pig. You can easily kill this this pig and probably that one as well. There's a kill. I'm backing up. Three lizards. You don't want to burrow home right now. You can kill another pig. Okay, so you're actually selling. All right. I see the th I see the thought process here. You got some value. Now you're selling down. Jason is stuck going into like a seven farm safety. So Scar is gonna take a nice little lead here. Was it actually a kill? Yes. You didn't. We didn't see a plus food pop up like the. Uh, the big plus something numbers would have popped up if Jason had sold. So yes, you actually did get the kill. That was good. I think you could have been more aggressive and actually gotten a second kill, but that's all right. And behind that, you're going to grab cams right away. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but for one last time, I promise I won't mention it anymore, but one last time, that cam warrant should be back here, not up in the front. It's too valuable to be tanking. All right, Jason is expanding to the bottom here and teching up as well. Welcome into the chat, Scav. Okay, that Scar actually running with a pretty small army right now. Might be definitely worth it to grab more lizards. Um, six tier one is so much... Okay, there we go. Excellent, excellent. So both cams are out. Getting mass lizard here. Jason is going to have to rely on Squirrel Mole, which does beat Pure Lizard, by the way. Um, in a straight-up fight, Squirrel Mole is just better. That Scar is going to be annoying with these lizards. I like it. A little farm sniping here. And it looks like the cam is kind of set for a potential flank. A couple of pigs for free. And he's going to rally home. Okay, actually he's going to lose the lizards. That's fine. That's 60 food for 120 food, so still good for Scar here. Jason Blade does have a pretty powerful army, though, for a potential counter push. I would rather be 2 cams and 12 squirrels than 2 cams and 12 lizards, but it's pretty close. So I think that Scar sees the potential push. MGs, I like, I like. I'm trying to be greedy behind MGs, this is good. Jason is grabbing more squirrels and could throw uh, throw down some extra moles as well. The cams are out of position, though, going for a potential flank or something. So Jason is going to push in while the cams are gone. Okay, both cams actually go down, and the, uh, the yellow cams are on their way back. So Jason could have gotten more value there, but as long as Scar can save that base, very nice. So a little risky having the cams out of position, but that Scar does barely hold there. It's so risky having your commander away from a potential fight. 
That's like one of the toughest things to manage in Tooth and Tail is commander placement. That's like the price you pay for not having to individually control units like a traditional RTS, right? Jason Blade can put on pressure with the superior range. Nothing that Scar has can equal the range of the squirrels. Except for MGs, I suppose. Scar is dropping the boar. Alright, so the, the timer is on Jason Blade. He's running a mostly tier 1 composition right now. If Scar can get up the boar, I think he can take the series. But if Jason Blade can can run in and, and kill... I guess it's a lot of MGs, man. You can kind of attack on the point here. MGs are better as a flat line, so if, if uh, Jason attacks from this direction, the MGs are going to crush. If Jason attacks from this direction, he can actually take them out, so that MG might have been better over. Oh, I like it, I like it. Just moving the position forward, okay, okay. Jason trying to tech up as well here. He's going to focus down the MGs, or try, but the cams and the lizards get out in front, so... Okay, the Mask Squirrel is actually doing pretty well here, but that last MG is just putting in the DPS, and Lizards running in for the flank. Lizards do beat Squirrels in a straight-up fight out in the open like that, partly because of their, their DPS is really strong. Also because of their movement speed, they can really get up on top of the Lizards, especially with those reinforcements in that longer fight. You had one wave of Lizards helping out, so that really works out for Scar. The Boar is about out, so Jason might just die here. Sasha, be nice. These are beginners. <laughs> okay, here comes the boar. Boar should be a perfect counter to the mass tier one. And the lizards do beat squirrels in a straight up fight. The boar did take a lot of damage here, so he's going to keep it back, waiting for a couple of pigeons to pop out to help. Meanwhile, the lizards are kind of cleaning up, and Jason Blade is going to have to tap out. Scar takes it. Reverse sweep. Nicely done. All right. Yeah, I, I, I just meant um, there was a lot of good plays. There was a lot of mistakes, you know, because there's a lot of things, a lot of little uh, imperfections you can clean up and stuff. But overall, I liked this skill from from a beginner standpoint. I thought there was a lot of good stuff in there. Um, plenty to improve upon. Oh no, no. I mean, you're you're welcome to to be here and watch. In fact, we're moving on to, let's see, it's winter load versus, let's see, Jimmy Chubb off season week three. Winter load versus Chris Coaddle. Winter load is definitely an experienced player and Chris, I believe is another beginner. Um, I just want to say when you're watching games, you got to like take in, into consideration the level of the players, and you can't expect perfect play or, or a lack of mistakes from lower level players that just don't have the experience to catch all of them. Okay, I'm going to reset the scoreboard here. Interload versus Chris. All right, I'm excited to see these two. Last match was really well. Uh, both players' go was really close. That was a really solid match. Let's see this one. Hopefully, Winterlow doesn't just completely stomp. Um, I don't remember what Chris's skill set is, but let's see what both players want to bring. Winterlow does like some different cheesy plays. Oh, not today. No, not some cheesy plays this time. Winterlow bringing a very stable meta Badger deck in the green here and socket wrench aka chris in the yellow also some extremely standard stuff i will say the pigeons don't uh, at least the idea from the communities the pigeons don't always synergize with a wolf quite as well as they do with like a badger um wolf kind of amps up the dps of a composition can position you can attack faster with it you can do more damage faster it's kind of a burst damage type army um whereas pigeons generally work with like a slower longer term kind of situation so we'll have to see but if the wolf doesn't come out then the pigeons are great here
that's just my thoughts. I don't know. I'm curious to see how Chris wants to use these. Call him, I'll call him Soccer Inch. That's a fun name. Looks like he is maybe teasing a little bit of mole aggression, but that's not going to work out. Winter load is just safely up to eight farms. And there goes the eighth farm for Socket. We can see already Winterload just kind of has like the standard, um, the standard macro of an experienced player here. He is keeping his food a lot lower. Not as worried about the mole pressure, especially killing the commander uh, here is going to allow him to just absolutely get so much free value out of this. Oh, that's, that's almost game ending. That's huge. If you've got warrens out on the map, like mole warrens, you, you literally, you, you just can't lose your commander, it's too much. So Winterload takes a nice lead from that, that's like 150 food for free. Socket Wrench is going to expand here. Yeah, and to be honest, a mole timing like that, like you're a... Oh, oh Winterload's got to be careful not to lose his commander too. When you are both at eight farms, there's not really much you can do with mole attacks, unless your opponent is already being greedy by expanding or teching. You can't really make something like that work anyway. It's a it's a timing that doesn't exist. Um, but yeah, if you do want to try mole shenanigans, you can't lose your commander and kind of moving out like that gave it away. So Winterload was able to capitalize on that, and he's going to be able to keep pressure on and tech up to Badger behind. Some really powerful one base play here. And Chris is in a little bit of trouble here, losing another pig, taking another army trade here. I guess, put, let me put it this way. If you have straight squirrel versus straight mole, the squirrel generally wins. Um, moles, like when your opponent has a full army up, mole flanking isn't really gonna do much. That's why that timing doesn't really ha work because Winterload already had enough squirrels to not have to worry about any mole shenanigans. It just, it was never gonna get enough value. Badger is up. We're getting some pigeons on the way. Nine pigeons is a great number with a one base badger. Chris going for Falcons, which on paper Falcons are the right counter to um, Badger, but the thing is Winterload is far enough ahead, I don't think it's going to matter. And here comes the timing push. Looks like Winterload is leading with the Badger, maybe to... Uh, hopefully hit if there's any mines out there like if there's a mine or two you want the badger to actually hit the mine because it has enough health to tank for it and that will that'll get the pigeon tags on it to start as well so leading with the badger makes a lot of sense and it looks like socket is gonna yep he's just gonna get run over first falcon goes down winter load actually broke his own badger up for a second but that's enough that does it Let's go to game two here. Sometimes in RTSs the game can be decided almost immediately in the early game, and then it still takes a couple of minutes for the person who is ahead to really close it out. That's normal, that's fine. It can make casting a little bit of a challenge, because um, there wasn't really anything that Chris could have done. After losing those moles, it was basically game over unless Winterload makes a big mistake. So let's see in this early game, we are back to even. Let's see what they both have in mind. Socket going for a more aggressive composition here, bringing lizards and moles, which both have their various forms of aggression. Winterload bringing his form of aggression with some ferrets, so let's just see here. What is he doing? Okay, looks like War uh, Winterload was teasing the idea of maybe a MG rush, but Socket already had a Squirrel Warren started, so nice, nice uh, pullback on that. You don't want to commit to something you know won't work, so. 
<laughs> Scav, <laughs> Scav says that's why I throw games the casters don't get bored. There you go, Scav. You're the caster's hero. The people demand a throw. All right, let's see. I hope suck. It's not gonna try to do some motion. No, no. You just gave your opponent sixty food for free. That's the same kind of idea. Is attacking with moles after the eight warrant after the eight farms when your opponent is just going tier one. There's no such thing as a score as a mole timing. You can't. It won't work. It's not gonna work. Um, just as boring as it sounds, just go home and buy squirrels and save the fancy stuff for later or earlier. Alright, so Winterlow did get the free food there, so he is safe to expand and attack at the same time. There's nothing that Chris can do to kind of punish. I guess with squirrels and lizards, if you throw some moles down, you might be able to, if Winterlode tries to get the tier 2 and a bunch of farms. Um, it looks like he's going to drop the wolf here. Wolf squirrel is good. I like the balance of squirrel to lizard in the uh, composition. Like 9 squirrels and 6 lizards, 12 squirrels and 6 lizards. I don't know, those are those are all pretty decent ratios. I like them. Winterlode here... He's got his ferret on the way, and MG up to be safe here, since he did grab a bunch of farms in case Socket was trying to go for a timing, which probably would have been the best choice here, I think. Instead of the wolf just like mass, mass tier one, and trying to crush your opponent, might have been an, a good idea. Okay, the wolf has been paid for. Let's see what Winterlode wants to do here. He's going to grab some tier 2. Alright, lots of skunk to counter Socket's um, squirrels. Just imagine this game if Socket had an extra 60 food from that earlier mole snipe, if that hadn't happened. That would be an additional 6 squirrels which would be a lot scarier, or an additional farm. Makes a big difference. Winterlode is doing his best to stay safe here until the skunks can come out. And Socket has actually got a pretty decent timing on these MGs. One MG almost... Okay, never mind. He was trying to focus it down, but Winterlode had enough squirrels of his own. The wolf is out, but Winterlode's got skunks as well. That base is toast. The wolf doesn't offer enough of a power spike on its own. If that was a boar um, or a badger, it'd be a different story. But the wolf has to have an army to buff, right? So Winterlode is able to poke right down the front door. He's not going to overextend. He's just going to lock Socket out of any kind of expansion. We're almost to the five-minute mark, which means these farms are going to start uh, following out. And Winterlode is able to go mass toad for the memes. It is over already. Yep, that's absolutely right. It came down to really, really strong macro out of winter load after that initial mil uh, mole snipe, and then that fight right there. Um, winter load got so much value out of that single fight that the game is up is over at this point. He's just going for the uh, the meme toad mill snipe that Winterlode loves to do. Okay, so he's rallying his skunks and, and uh, squirrels forward, and then he's going to play with his toads once the fight starts. He's going to run off to the side here, snipe the mill, and the lizards along with it. Oh, he's going for the main mill, too. Okay, so Winterlet actually just like completely threw away all of those toads. He could have decimated the army or the expansion, but he went for the original mill there. 
So a little bit of a throw from Winterlord, but he's still really far ahead. Still five farms to three. He just kind of fed way too many toads into the grinding machine here. Playing with food. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to speed up a tiny bit here. There's the mill snipe. And the toads are just kind of inefficiently erasing everything here. And Socket would be starving if it weren't for this campfire, so campfires are pretty nice. And Winterload is going to sell down and see if he can get more toads for the, uh, the second mill snipe again here. All right, here they go. All right, Winterload takes game two. It decides to end it with a toad kill. Let's go to game three here. Winterload in the green here in the bottom left, and Socket Wrench, aka Chris Quettle. Chris in the yellow in the right. I do want to throw it out as a reminder. Um, Winterload is definitely a stronger player. He's kind of on the border of beginner and intermediate, probably intermediate. Um, if Winterload is, you know, up to practice and whatever, he's definitely a intermediate level player. He's been around for a long time, so he has a lot of experience. Um, has a penchant for the cheese and the meme, but otherwise, strong player. And Chris is definitely a newer player. But I think Chris has got, you know, he's got some good ideas. He needs to, I think he needs to stop trying to do oddly timed mole rushes that aren't going to work. Especially if your opponent sees you do it. Like, if your opponent sees your mole warrants, it's not going to work. Um, so I think cleaning that up a little bit would, would, uh, would do a lot for Chris here as far as getting into viable situations later in the game where his ideas can work out. We do see a pretty big deck uh, shake up here from both players, especially from Chris. Going into more structures, some snakes. Winterload playing the Falcon only tier two game with a double tier three. Neither side going for moles, so let's see what Socket can do here without the temptation of the moles. For a lot of players, moles and structures both can be a bit of a uh, an ill-advised pick merely because of the temptation. If you've got moles, you're going to be tempted to use them. If you've got structures, you're going to be tempted to buy them, and so many times they actually can hurt. Like, you can hurt yourself by throwing away food into something that's not helping you, so... You know... Until you really have a handle of, of timings and what and uh, different army compositions, it might be better to stick with like mainly squirrel tier one without the moles and a lot of tier two, maybe a boar or something. So you can kind of get a feel for when you might have openings to throw in something like some MGs for some greed or some mole for timing pushes or punishments or cheese or whatever. So far though, I like what Chris is doing here. He's going for the expansion. He's got the tech on the way. Squirrel Cam is a really, really strong, well-rounded composition. Winterload here going squirrels and greeting up a little bit. He's got MGs to try to stay safe while he farms up. And let's see. It looks like Chris is going to try to push in. Not a bad idea. The MGs can't entirely cover all of the ground. You can kind of go around and either snipe the MGs while they're kind of undefended. Very nice, you want to keep your commander alive, and the first MG does go down, and he gets his cam away alive, which is nice. It took a little bit too long to kill the uh, to kill the MG. If you're going to focus it down, you really got to make sure it dies. But as long as that cam doesn't get sniped... Ooh, Winterlord loses his commander there, so Chris should be able to clean this up pretty nicely. Overall, Winterload is definitely still ahead with all of these farms. 
But I like the ideas from Socket. Just a little bit cleaner execution would do it here. Now this time Winterload has some Falcons, which are safe from the... Uh, they're safe from the cams. Is Socket an alt name? Socket is the same as Chris, yeah. It's his Steam name or an alt or something. All right, there's an MG for Chris. Generally speaking, your MGs, you want to, this MG placement is a lot safer because it's right next to your pig. So everything is in one condensed little clump where the pigs can tank a little and shoot. Um, like everything close together is really efficient. Whereas this, the MG is kind of out on its own. It's not bad, but it's not as good, I guess is what I'm saying. Socket is farming up here. I like that. Trying to get a little bit more cam. Mass cam squirrel can beat just about anything, honestly. Has very few weaknesses. Winter load is going up into both of his tier three. Lots and lots of tech behind the, the uh, economy he went for. And Socket is gonna go for a bit of a flank here. Let's see what he wants. It looks like he wants to go for Warrens here, but he's actually going to bump into the army just at a weird flank. Which isn't terrible, but Winterload is able to kill here. Especially with the pigs helping out. You underestimate the power of pigs, right? I think if uh, if Chris had actually just attacked the pigs in there, he would have at least killed three and then had that same army trade, and you would have killed three pigs. But he was getting a little greedy and trying to go under the cover of pig fire and even the MG firing a tiny bit. He was trying to go for Warrens. So Winterload actually ends up holding very, very efficiently. You can see Chris actually lost twice as much there in that fight. So that was that was the uh, ramifications of that decision. Now the MG and the RD together here are going to be a pretty solid counter to the Fox. Since Fox cannot target structures, you can kind of keep your opponent locked out from getting as much value as it wants. Um... However, Winterload is going like Mass Falcon, which they already can't shoot up, right? So, it, Winterload still has plenty of options. It's just gonna have to be careful here. Socket's got MGs and Arties to keep positions on the map safe from the Fox. He's got cams. If you set your cams, like just rally your cams only to like right there all four of them and if Winterload's not careful he can walk into your cams and lose his fox in a second it won't work against premier players as much because they can they can kind of see it coming but it's definitely a thing you can do notice Winterload is farming up on a third base here in the back he sees the arty and he knows his falcons do not need to be scared of that so he can just kind of place the army out here Ooh. Caffeine Fox. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, so he pulls the Squirrel Army out of position. He's trying to get a bunch of damage done. A little risky from Winter Load, but it works. How many mines to kill a Fox? Three. Good question. Thank you, Tatanka. I think two mines gets a fox down to really low health, too. So if you just hit it with two mines and then, like, a squirrel shot or something... Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but if a mine does, like, ten damage direct, that would get a fox down to, like, five health. That third mine is the finishing touch, but sometimes two is enough. Alright, so Chris is trying to lock down his side of the map. Do note... Um, that technically Socket has four bases plus five right here if he takes this side of the map. Now the Falcons can abuse the heck out of this cliff. Oh man, he's going for the Mass Falcon snipe over here. There are Squirrels though. Squirrels and Snakes can both counter Falcons, but he is going to try to get out. He's going to try to get his Falcons up to the high ground and, and burrow home. So he does lose, I think, just three Falcons there. Maybe four. I think four. That one should die. Yeah, okay, yeah. Four Falcons did go down in exchange for, it looks like, a mill with two farms, so... Three farms? 
That was actually technically value for Chris. The, the Falcons are going to be able to gun down this Artie. Falcons are a nice classic counter to Artie since Artie can't shoot up. Kind of sells it for partial value here. I do like the large amounts of snakes here. Snakes can be pretty scary against Falcons and against Fox. So it's definitely making Winterload play carefully here. As I was saying, if Socket plays defensively, he keeps, you know, Arties and, and MGs and stuff, he can actually have five bases versus Winterload's four. So he can win in a long game. This base right here is super important. That Artie is going to kill Winterload's extra base here, which is going to be amazing. And with a couple of MGs to cover for it, um, so the Falcons can't do too many shenanigans. That's not enough MGs against the uh, 16 Falcons, but still. Uh-oh, we might see a bit of a base trade here. Socket's army is kind of uselessly over here. I do want to point out, there's no point in the army being here since there's... I guess he was trying to defend against Falcons. Never mind. Never mind. He used to ride of that Falcon flank, but... Winload out here in the main area. Commander just gets sniped instantly, so there's nobody to focus fire with the snakes. Mass Falcons should roll through everything. This base is going to go down eventually, but there's nothing to, can, to fight against the 13 Falcons here. Alright, Winterload takes him out, 3-0. Again, I liked the ideas from Chris, but we saw a bit of a skill gap there, unfortunately. So, GG's. Okay, we've got one more set for you guys, and then I'm going to play some games. Let's see, this is going to be Scav versus Shenshei. I believe they're both in the chat now. Welcome in, guys. It's going to be on the patch test, right? It says off patch. Scav, are these vanilla or are these patch test? With the mod. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so I'm going to restart my tooth and tail real quick so that I can... Use that mod. Give me literally like 20 seconds. Solid state memory, solid state storage is amazing because you can just launch games like in a matter of seconds. And we are going to reset the score here. Scav. Oh, what did I do? Yo, what is this? How do I turn that off? <laughs> I hope somebody in the chat. What button did I bump? Was it two buttons? Top left. Escape. No, 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 no. That's not it. Below escape. The tilde? Oh, there it is. Thank you. I thought I pressed that. Okay, well. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Oh, you all knew. <laughs> Okay. Scav versus Shen. Oh, off-season public test with the patch and everything. In short, off-patch. Got it. Slightly confusing title there. It's fine. Alrighty, guys. Let's get started here. Scav versus Shen Shei. Game one. All right, Shen Shei in the bottom here, running Lizard Crow. Okay, all right. Starting it off a little little different. I like to see it. Let's see how it goes. Scav over here with the Squirrel Mole into Scavs, the namesake unit here. So I definitely see the gameplay from the uh, the game plan, excuse me, from Scav. It's going to go tier two, like snakes and scavs out front with pigeons to support them. Honestly, I think scavs and pigeons are an amazing combo because... Pigeons sustain pushes, and scavs have to be sustained to work because they're going to be out on the map, so I like it. Scav being a little cheeky with the mole here. It's a little far away, though. I don't think it's going to be able to get its kill. Of course, that pig is kind of alone, so it's going to force Shen to go into lizards. Five farm double. Scav can go with a six farm double to stay safe. 
Or maybe a six from single and a couple of mines. Yeah, that should do it. That should do it. And Shen is going to try to get some damage here. But Scav has got a squirrel. He's got a mine. He's got some moles on the way. So Scav should be totally fine here. Unless that mine doesn't... Okay, the mine goes off. Yeah. Yep. Shen cannot actually get in there. Oh, no! Shen! Okay. Wow. The lizard gets away. What mod is this? Okay, so this is... Sorry. This is the patch test published by Eel in the Steam Betas. Ooh, Scav is going in this time. He does have all six lizards. Let's see. I'll explain in a second. Very nice. Four lizards again. He can snipe a squirrel. He can snipe them all and force a cell on the farm at least. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Two lizards get sniped at the end there. That's actually really good for Scav. The pig's putting in work. The lizards... If the lizards had stuck around and actually focused that pig for a second, I think they might have been able to kill it. Um, but again, Shen hesitated for like literally a quarter of a second and Scav should be fine. <clears throat> I think the lizard shenanigans are officially completely over. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, so Eel published a beta, Steam beta for the new version, which has crows, which we might see this game, and it has scavs, the raccoons, which we might also see this game. It also has a lot of balancing units for other, balancing for other units. Uh, I think snakes in particular get a pretty big rework slash buff. Um, and then the mod that we're talking about is an additional change to the balance of some of the units. Um, just the original uh, patch test had some balance issues with crows and snakes and skunks. Um, so instead of just publishing a new beta, Eel went ahead and made a mod for the, uh, the next kind of iteration of the balance testing. Eventually this will become this with maybe another adjustment or two as Eel sees these games. This will become the new uh, version of Tooth and Tail. So. Ah, Shen has a ninja here. Very nice. We are seeing Mass Lizard. Now, Mass Lizard does counter Mass Squirrel on paper. Uh, out in the open, especially. Um, when they're, when it's pig, Squirrel plus pig actually just routes Lizard pretty well. Um, but out in the open, the Lizards do, do well against Squirrels and can beat them. Um, crows scale very well as well. So once you start getting 9 or 12 Crows, at that point, the more you get, the better they are. They're just scale really really well i actually wish that shen was going more crows at this point maybe 12 lizards and then just literally mass crow i don't think there's anything scav would be able to do against it but we'll see how these two armies line up scav is setting up his scavs out here in the front where they can gain food he's kind of using the uh the scavs here as additional food plus one every several seconds i think it's four seconds yeah Every four seconds, they get plus one each. Whereas Shen has a bit of a ninja that Scav is going to scout here. He's going to rally over just his Scavs to take care of it, while the rest of his army, the mines here, as well as the squirrel, mole, and pigeon. Oh, no, the lizards! Ah! Oh, wow. Okay. Shen does rally over his army just in time to save the ninja. Scav is going to have to just put on a little bit of pressure here. And here come the crows, gonna see if they can roll through everything. The mines do go off, and oh my goodness, Scav just chews everything up. There weren't enough crows, I don't think. And the lizards did die on some mines, so that was really, really well for Scav. Oh my goodness. That's kind of funny. Attacking in to squirrels and, and scavs with lizard crow is actually kind of tricky because the squirrels and scavs will get the first shot off against the uh, the swift short range and the agile melee. Okay, and this army is kind of staggering back. Nice micro from scav there, kind of click moving. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like he's trying to put pressure onto this expansion. All he really needs to do is rally his moles in there and that should do it. Now Shen is really in trouble, because remember, Scav has the little extra eco of those scavs. 
out on the map getting a little extra food every four seconds. It adds up. Nothing like pure squirrel, am I right? Oh no, and the contain. A soft contain with the added hardness of the uh, mines here, which are going to really, really work well against Shen's lizards. Shen has a boar, though. If he can keep that boar alive, the boar is going to torch the masked squirrel. Let's see what Shen can do here. This is amazing. He's just carefully chewing down the front of Scav's army, and Scav is going to have to maybe back up here. Okay, a couple of nice shots from the Scavs here. Softening up that boar just a little bit. Scav does have a nice uh, kind of concave of, of units here. So it takes the boar long enough to torch everything. The boar actually goes down, and I think Shen has to tap out. Nicely done. So Scav takes game one. The boar explosion did. Uh, the boar explosion only damages units in a small radius, and uh, Scar Scav, excuse me, had not very much, not very many units left over. Um, the boar like slowly torched all of the squirrels since they stayed spread. I want to say that there was a lot of discipline from Scav in not bunching up his squirrels. It's really tempting to rally all your squirrels together, and they will bunch up and get roasted with the AoE of the boar. But if you leave them all spread out, the boar AoE is only actually a three by three area. So that's like one way that squirrels can beat a boar is if you let them stay spread out and do their damage and be patient. Um, so Shen Shui did kill all the squirrels, but then there was left uh, two scavengers, two of the raccoons left, and they were able to snipe the boar from a little bit of a distance. So there's nothing for the boar bomb to actually kill, maybe a single squirrel. So that's why it's not about the amount of damage, it's about the radius. Oh, also boar, boar explosion doesn't dam doesn't shoot up. The, it, it's only against ground. So pigeons were not going to take any damage from the boar bomb anyway. I think in previous versions, boars used to damage air, but that was really, really overpowered. Correct. It does not work against falcons, yeah. The reason boar boar armies can beat falcon armies is because the boar can deal with all of the ground units and tank so if you have boar squirrel for example the boar can tank where where your squirrels can kill their falcons if that makes sense that's the thing about rts um like using compositions against each other the math of like different uh, different unit compositions is in RTS you almost never have only one unit type you have mixes you have combinations uh, different compositions of of units and so when people are trying to do balance math in their heads and you know figure out what works against what it's very easy to forget that you're going to be dealing with a mix of units not just one so it complicates the math a lot um, case in point is Pure Lizard beats Pure Squirrel in an open field. If there's nothing else, Lizards will beat Squirrels in almost every situation. But, because we're never, almost never in that Pure Lizard versus Pure Squirrel in an open field situation, in almost every situation there's some complicating factor, like Pigs being around, or Warrens being around, or other units being around. And in any of those situations, the Squirrels will do better. So that's why Squirrels are better than Lizards. They don't have any huge direct counters, except for, like, Skunks whereas lizards do, and squirrels can just beat lizards if there's anything else involved. Skunk there putting down a little bit of pre-gas and actually a little bit too far, far, far forward gets sniped. The second skunk pops out. Shen should be able to hold here. He does lose a couple of pigs, though, so really nice pressure from Scav. And he is actually retreating. His commander must have died or burrowed or something, burrowed home. So Shen is in a little bit of trouble here, trying to hold with just one, soon to be two squirrel, or two skunks. Okay, so Scav is going to have to back up here. He took a lot of damage on his squirrels and lost an extra um, toad there. Ah, there you go, Scar. Trying to run a heavily wounded boar into falcons. Yep, doesn't do anything. Notice here the Scav Warren is put dangerously far forward. This is the only case where you want your tier 2 Warren forward. 
it is risky, but you have to get your scavs out of your territory if you don't want to lose food, because they will lose equivalent of a food every second if you leave them in your own territory, so it's tricky. The skunks are putting on they're dangerously far forward from the army, but there's a lot of chokes here so it's hard to chase skunks through chokes. So Skev is setting up his forward position and he's going to rally that Skev immediately out of his base so he doesn't lose any food. He's going to buy that um, expansion. I, I kind of think Skev should go for the back expansion. But that's all right. Let's see what he has in mind here. Putting down a couple of mines, which will be very helpful here. He is going to rally that second scav out. And it's out just in time. Uh-oh, there's the minus four. Whew, okay, just one minus four. I love the eating animation the scavs do. It's so cute. It's a little gimmicky. Uh, it's not in practice. It's not quite as gimmicky as you'd think. It it, it works. It's kind of an interesting aggressive unit. It's like a weird fox thing. Like in function, it's really kind of similar to how you play a fox. Kinda, kinda. I mean, it is technically a gimmick, but uh, I don't know. I think I think it's all right. I like it. It's kind of interesting. It's not too powerful of a unit. If it were too powerful of a unit, it would it would not work. It's it's got to have its strength based on its gimmick, basically. Oh man, the skunk gas is doing so much! Skunks did get a bit, a bit of a buff in this patch, so they're doing really well here. Snakes also are a lot better in a straight-up fight, so Scav actually just gets pushed back there. He did well in the first, like, couple minutes of that fight, or couple minutes, couple seconds of that fight, but then over time, his tier 1 just kind of evaporated. He's trying to focus that snake down, but the scav takes too many poison tags. Scav might have to fall back behind his mines and maybe sell off his raccoons. Ah! Hey! Welcome into the chat, Illuminatus. Yeah, you're welcome. The, I love the eating animation. It's adorable. I mean, as if seeing the little plus one or minus four over the heads wasn't enough, you actually get to see the animation move, which is helpful as well, not just cute. Nice flank here from Scav, so you, the skunks have to work double time to close out two different angles, so the skunks are still going to get plenty of work done, but it gives Scav a little bit of an opportunity here. He's trying to get his, his raccoons back up. Ooh, that one eats. Mm, well, no, that's kind of the whole point, Scar, is the whole, the whole design point of the Scav was to make you go out on the map more. We just kind of force the player to... Uh, play aggressive to to reward um, attacking instead of defending so it would it would kind of defeat the point of the unit to not have the loss of food at home it's not too bad these snakes are putting in work I will say I, I love the fact that the snakes no longer target structures um, I feel like it will be very difficult for snakes to become as overpowered as they used to be because they don't also target structures. Back in the day, snakes would actually be a counter to MGs, which is ridiculous. I feel like skunks might actually be a little bit too strong. That's not the reason that Shinshi is winning this necessarily. I mean, skunks are supposed to counter mass tier 1. I don't know, I just, I feel like the, uh, I feel like they, they've gotten a bit of a buff. I do like that they still function the same as the previous, uh, vanilla patch. They still have the two DPS and they still have the six range. And I think the buff they got was root time and, like, a, they're, they can kite more quickly with, with better root time, which is already huge because that's what you had to do in the last patch is you have to kind of kite with them, right? Um, what was the other thing they got? Was the, oh, the gas lasts longer. That might be a bit much. I don't know. Skunk plus snake HP seems pretty high. Yeah, okay, so if you want to keep the, uh, if you want to keep the root time low on the skunks and you want to still buff the gas length, you might have to not buff their HP in exchange, because remember the skunks in the current patch are a lot better than people originally gave them credit for. They're not underpowered at all, 
So the only reason you'd need to give skunks a buff is because of the existence of crows and scavs. Um, is my thought anyway. Yes, no, 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 I, I agree. I agree. That's not why Shen won the game. And tier 2 should be an advantage. You shouldn't be able to beat tier 2 with tier 1, generally speaking. So, no, I agree. I agree. Shen Shei takes it. Let's go on to the next game. Yeah, Scav kept pushing there and kind of played a little a little more aggressive than he had the means to be able to do. I think if we'd gone back to that last game and if Scav had expanded backwards instead of forwards, it would have given him more flexibility with his raccoons to be able to move around. So it's an interesting factor. If you're going to be playing with raccoons, like which way you expand has another layer of decision making to it, which I, I kind of appreciate. More decisions, right? More choices is better for strategy. I like it. All right, looks like none of the new units are in play in this game three. We just have Squirrel, we got Pigeon, and then a whole bunch of different units on each side. So the main difference here that we can watch out for is the Snakes and the Skunks. I think Squirrels and Pigeons and Falcons are all unchanged. Ferrets are unchanged. Owls are unchanged. Wolf and Fox and MG are unchanged. So the only difference we have here is Shen has the Skunk Snake. Scav. Scav hates owls, by the way. If anyone didn't couldn't tell, he thinks they're boring. Um, I don't think this game is going to get too boring since Scav doesn't have anything to really fight mass mice. I guess mass falcon and MG together can kind of hold off mice waves, but this is definitely not going to really be able to turn into kind of a stalemate game with those owls. The owls are going to, you know crush some foxes or something, or they're going to die. I don't know. I like owls. To each their own, right? It's a stylistic thing. I appreciate the the incredible differences. The game looks so different from one tier 3 to the next. I do appreciate that the incredible variety there. Even if someone like Scav really doesn't like owls, you know what? At least they're so much different than the other tier 3 that it you know, it can it can make an entirely different game, right? <laughs> Owls are cinematic. You think it's alright, you're just opinionated? Yeah, that's fine. Can we all agree that the, all the tier 3 are very different? <laughs> Not just in stats, but like in how the game is played when they're out. Both sides are getting up tech. And expanding here. Scav going for the uh, Mass Falcon. Pretty defensive. Shen going for the Skunk Snake. I think Skunk Snake should absolutely wreck Falcon in these situations. Um, snakes are just going to brutalize the Falcons, which is good. I think Snakes ought to be somewhat of a counter to, snake, to Falcons. Snakes should counter Falcons is what I'm trying to say. Maybe not like super hard. They should be more of a kind of a softer counter, but they should definitely be the right thing. And then the Skunks are tanky enough and they'll kill Shen's supporting Squirrel, so... Let's see if Scav can win this one. Oh yeah, 15 health on a Falcon. Right? Oh, 16, I guess. Snake does, what, 12 damage or 15? Oh, man. Even, even if Snakes only do 12 damage here, with a couple of pig shots, you know, those Falcons just got roasted. So Shen's got the better comp for sure. I do think these new snakes are pretty dang viable. Okay, nice engagement from Scav there. He hasn't taken any tags on his falcons yet, and he's... Oh my gosh, he's... Is that skunk gonna get away? Wow. Man, that's disappointing. But Scav still pushes him back there. Very nice. The MGs are still good. Uh, MGs... Skunk Snake doesn't exactly have an answer to MG since snakes don't target them and skunks don't target them. The only thing that a Skunk Snake player can really do against an MG is, you know, hope that the MGs are actually creating chokes and the Skunk Gas can sometimes 
do well in those artificial chokes created by MGs, but overall, I think Scav has got the right idea. MG Squirrel, uh, MG Squirrel and Falcon together is pretty powerful. Shen is going to get into the Owls and additional Snakes. This is kind of spicy, I think. The, uh, the additional Snakes, if the Snakes can target Falcons, Shen wins the fight. If the snakes accidentally target squirrels instead, then Scav should win the fight. It has to do with if you're around to target fire, since Mass Squirrel is kind of a counter to snake, and Mass Falcon is definitely not. Here comes the push. The Falcons are getting a lot of damage done, so even if they get killed, they've already put in a lot of value, and I think they might just barely survive. Okay, nope, they do die. They do die. Their pigeons are trying to heal that one falcon back to health, and it works. So only one falcon actually went down there. Shen is taking a lot of damage. But Scav is trying to kite with falcons against snakes, which is really tough, and against skunks, which is really tough. Shen has got a better kiting comp. Scav did get a bunch of value there in the, in the beginning of that fight, but there's an owl about to come out. Okay. Freka brings up a good point here. Um, when the snake poisons, it immediately says two tags, which later drops to one as one of the tags has a shorter durability. I think I kind of agree. Like, I like the stat-wise of that, the two tags with one not lasting as long, or whatever it was. Um, but I agree, uh, maybe visually show only one, the pair of them only show up as one. Is that possible to just change only the way that it displays? So I like the, the multi-layer of poison effect, like the way the math works out is really nice. But if it only shows one tag, then it, it actually feels like the tag is like doing diminishing amounts of, of poison damage, you know what I mean? Like I don't think it would feel weird um, to not have that shown at all. It's still pretty clear. Alright, the Mice Wave does go in. The Mice will eventually time out, but Scav is going to try to just take out the army in the meantime. He might try to focus the Owl here. No, he can't, retur he can't retreat. You gotta, you gotta hard commit against Snakes. Any moment of retreating is like, uh, I think, I think Shannon's just going to take it. The Falcons go down. The Squirrels are being are stuck attacking the mill. That mill was genius from Shen, actually. If those Squirrels had been here, there had been at least one more Snake killed. Maybe another Falcon uh, spared. Oh, man. No, I don't think it would, I don't think it would be confusing at all. I don't think it would be confusing at all if it only shows one tag that starts off by doing what, like 2 DPS and then later dropping to 1 for a total of 12 or 15 damage or whatever it is. I don't think that would be confusing in the slightest. Okay, so here we see the mice are... they only kill one squirrel. They are cleaned up with the, uh, the mass MG, but I think the skunks are too good here. The skunk snake is just too much for Scab to attack into. He is getting a lot of falcons, which are the perfect high DPS he needs, especially with the Pigeons. I don't know, man. Maybe dropping some of the MGs and adding extra Pigeons and Squirrels would be good. Like, I, this is tough. Shen is going to try to harass from the side here. I like it, actually. So one Owl, the thing about one Owl is it's not enough uh, power to actually work as a fighting composition. We, when you have two owls or more, that's when you can actually fight with it. But one owl is only really harassment. It's it's it doesn't, uh, which is really interesting, I think. And maybe Scav might agree that one owl isn't as bad because it, it doesn't just take over the game as much. <laughs> oh my God, Scav, shut up! <laughs> with all due respect and love, Scav. That second owl is when you can turn your uh, turn your alarm on. 
because then it becomes a real fight against the actual might of the like the the beefiness of the mice just it's enough mice that it starts to really be an issue but when it's only one it's just harassment and what you're actually fighting, what you're actually struggling against is the skunk snake. Freka says the uh, the falcons are boring. All right, here we go. Single mouse wave is cleared up. It does buy a little bit of time for Shenshe's squirrels and snakes to get some extra hits, but. Here goes. We, ha we are hard committing, trying to focus down the tier two. Shen has to retreat over his warrens. The falcons are dropping here. There are enough uh, pigeons around to keep those few squirrels left alive. One snake left, and then the single... Oh, man. The single owl and the single snake. That snake is a hero, man. Scav was just not quite able to chase it down. Uh, Shen, are you talking about the new patch or the current live patch? By the way, I, I don't, don't get the wrong idea, Eel. I don't think we need to nerf Falcons at all. Everything else is getting a buff. Um, snakes are getting a buff, so they're doing very well against Falcons, we're seeing here. I think Falcons are great. They did they did miss out on their classic counter, the Snake, but the Snakes are coming back, so I think, I think it becomes a more interesting matchup again here. Now we do have two owls, though, so the amount of mice that comes out in a wave is going to be too much. As soon as Shen throws those out, it is going to just kind of turn into a, a war of attrition here. Oh, no. The falcon warrens. I don't think falcons have had any change to stats in the new patch. I think Scav, what you might what you might be most strongly reacting to is, I mean, the consistency of Wolf Owl in that one patch, sure, but also just the Owl versus Owl. If it's if it's a one sided like an asymmetrical only owls on one side uh, kind of situation, nice chasing by the way. Those Falcons, if they can clean up that one snake, then the Owls are actually defenseless. Can Scav actually take this? What the heck? It's, it's a lot of mice for them to chew through. They need to kill that snake warren, because that snake is what they got to worry about. Owls can base race. Yeah, owls are like a, a super lizard spawner thing. I don't know. I think owls on one side versus no owls on the other is actually very interesting. It's it's owl versus owl that can get a little bit wacky and, and snail meaty. Speaking of base trade, uh, Shen is going for it. He's got a lot of bases around the map, and Scav is just trying to corner the owls so that he can kill them off. The mice do run right for the MGs, which is good for the uh, for Scav. Okay, he's actually pausing to take care of the mice, which I think is a mistake. The owls might get away. There is a single snake on the way here. Oh, he is sold. The snake is sold. Scav, no, Scav, the owls. Ah! Oh my gosh. Scav, what are you doing? Oh my god, these owls! They're just not dying. You have to kill the owls. Oh my god, they're gonna get away! It's slippery indeed, what the heck? And you can't gun them down with the falcons when you're chasing because... The mice are always the ones that are going to take the first hits, right? Because they're kind of trailing behind. This is ridiculous. I have no idea who can take this, honestly. Because if Shen keeps running around like this, like, the owls are going to kill everything, right? And Shen burrowed home, Scav, here's your chance! And of course you have to deal with the mice so the owls get to escape again. But Shen burrowed home again. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Okay, he burrowed here. Oh my god, this is infuriating. Scav, how are you not, like, so annoyed at this point? One owl does finally go down! 
<laughs> this is the weirdest game I've ever seen. What the heck? Okay, so one owl now. I don't think Shen has a chance anymore. Like I said, one owl's worth of mice is not enough to be a force to wreck. It's only harassment at this point. So I think Shen is toast. I think Scav's got him. I mean, you still have to chase the dang owl because Shen has four bases around the map. I mean, I guess there's still there's two MGs here still, so maybe you just ignore the owl and go kill the rest of Shen's bases now. Here goes! The owl goes down finally, and Scav takes it. Oh my goodness. That was so crazy. And now Shen has to go Mass Squirrel and hope he can pay for it. Because Mass Squirrel does beat Falcons. Oh my gosh, there are two pigeons though. Okay, one round of squirrels is out. Six, seven squirrels, about to be eight. But the thing is, Scav has MGs and a, like one squirrel on his own and it's an extra squirrel, or an extra pig here. Five falcons, here we go, can he corner them? Fifteen squirrels should easily be able to kill five falcons if they get the first volley off. Oh, one, one squirrel goes down. It is satisfying to see owls die, yeah that's true. Um, honestly, Shen, I think you're asking the wrong question. It's not how you manage to lose the owls, it's how you manage to keep them alive for so damn long. Okay, unfortunately for Shen here, you can't kite falcons like that. You have to hard commit. So two falcons have gone down and they won't be able to be rebuilt. But he loses all his squirrels! And he has to tap. Wow. That was a weird game. See, Owls versus something else is actually pretty interesting. I, I do enjoy that. Alright, let's get into game four here. Scav is on match point, up two to one, and he's pulling out the raccoons again. And Shen Shei up here... I, I thought he was going to take that game. I thought the Skunk Snake was doing its job to counter the Falcons, and Scav just barely pulled it out and actually beat down the Owls. Maybe the Owl Switch was actually, like, not the best choice there or something. I don't know. That was crazy. Anyway, Shen Shei up here pulling out the Crows again, and the Four Farm Lizard Rush. Is Scav going to see it in time? There it is. What's his response going to be? Sell down to five farm. Double with lizards as well instead of the squirrels. Interesting choice. I definitely prefer squirrels myself. Um, like if I'm going to play defensively, I'd rather have squirrels and pigs together rather than lizards since their range can really help. But I guess they can run up to the front lines like that split second sooner and maybe chase slightly. Oh my gosh, he's going to get it. No, he's not going to get it. Oh, it was a misclick maybe. Yeah, I mean, not a huge deal. Not a huge deal. The Lizard Rush did get its kill. So that makes Shen slightly ahead. This is just a... This is a treacherous situation to get out of. Once the Rush has been scouted and it's happened, it's like this weird game where neither side can actually sell down Warrens or they'll die instantly. You just have to, like, very carefully farm up, be ready to punish you if your opponent sells, and be ready to buy a third Warren if you need to. Both sides are grabbing that third Warren. Oh, you intended to do this, but it was a bad decision. Okay, I respect that. I, th I think, I agree. I think it was the incorrect decision. If I'm getting lizard rushed, I will always try to respond with squirrels. Um, just as a rule, I suppose. I don't know, as a caster, maybe I also find the asymmetricality um, interesting. Ooh, oh, I don't know about this from Scav. Shen has squirrels here. And he actually had one extra tier one there as well. One extra tier one plus a couple of pigs firing plus the diversity of squirrel and lizard together meant that Shen, like, totally crushed right there. 
and he's able to get up to eight farms completely safely and get up into four tier one warrants as well. Scav is stuck on three tier one warrants, and there's the eighth farm just started. So Shen Shei is actually a decent amount ahead there after that hold. Lizards can be tough, man. They take a lot of practice to do well. A lot of people will turn will say that it's because lizards aren't good, and I I actually disagree completely. I think lizards are still good. They're just they're not as straightforward as they used to be. You have to try a lot harder to get value out of them. They they have few they have fewer uses where they're good. So I wouldn't I have been convinced. I would not complain about seeing a return to eight hit point lizards. I, I resisted it first, but I could see it. Shen should be able to just roll over here. Go off a third pig and then pull back to safety. Not over committing. Gotta regroup here. Scav will be able to push him back and, and deal some extra damage, but eight farms against five, it's just a matter of time before that is too much. Those trickily fights are always so weird to watch. So Shen Shei ties up the series there with the uh, clever rush. Let's go up into game five. A couple of really hype series today. I'm glad we've got a couple of game fives. Shen Shei just going for squirrels. This is only tier one. Plenty of tier two to work with. And then potentially owls. Um, also, I like the choice of the barbed wire. That's another one that's not as bad as people think it is. Um, I think Barbed Wire could use like the tiniest nerf, maybe? Maybe like a build time? Faster build time or something? I don't know. I definitely don't want to go back to the Barbed Wire meta, that's for dang sure. I would just, I would like to see Wire become a actual viable alternative to mines. I don't know, Eel, what do you think about that? I know that, um... I think mine, or sorry, reveal radius is increased, which is technically an indirect nerf to mines. So maybe that gives wire a little bit of play again. It's just in the current patch, everything wire can do, mines can kind of do better. So maybe with the reveal radius increase, I, that might that might give wire a little bit of presence. I definitely play with wire anyway. Um, lately, I have been because I think it's interesting. Let's see what Scav wants to do here. He is going to have to get a second Warren, since his opponent does have the extra tier 1 here. So there's that second Warren and the 8th farm queued up, so I really like Scav's position here. Shen doesn't really have an opening for trying to, to push here. It's going to be 5 Squirrels versus 4, but Scav has the pig defense and a slight amount of high ground here. Okay, one squirrel actually lost right away for Scav, so that's kind of a big deal. Gives Shen Shei a little bit of opportunities here. He might be able to kill a pig. <gasps> nice. All right, so somehow Shen did actually snipe a squirrel right at the very beginning. Nice micro. I'm a little bit worried for Scav. 6-3 is not exactly the best number for Squirrel Toad. Yeah, Shen did play that perfectly. That was that was that was like protocam level micro in that one situation. See the toads, they just don't do anything, man. It's not even close. You like you need you need more than three toads. So Scav actually taps out there, and Shen takes the series. GG's.